I came back from the Paralympics, having won my first Paralympic medal, I went to the supermarket, was shopping for groceries, and a lady came up to me and said, congratulations. I was thinking, wow, this is so exciting. Someone's noticed. I finally achieved this goal until she said these words on being out of the house. And it was then that I realised that as a society, we have a very warped vision of disability. And perhaps we are actually having limiting beliefs, not only about people who have an obvious disability, but maybe our beliefs about what's possible for all of us are limiting what we can do. And in a way, we're all disabling ourselves. I also wonder what would have happened to that woman if I'd mentioned that I've been around the world for six months travelling by myself. So I decided to type into Google disability and look what came up. Do I look like, and did that photo look like a lack of physical strength? My idea of the disability was, I use a piece of assistive technology to get around, cause a wheelchair, and now my physical impairment is gone. So what's my real disability? What? I can't read roadmaps. That's what stops me from leading a full and meaningful life. Seriously, I wouldn't be here tonight if it was not for Siri, my telephone, my piece of assistive technology. The second part of this disability definition from Google tells us a lack of the ability to lead a meaningful life and contribute. I have a university degree, I run a charity, I run my own business, I've had a job. I'm loving being part of a wonderful family and with a great group of friends who are here to support me. Does that sound like a non-meaningful life? So I started to think maybe we are creating a strange concept around disability. So how does it affect you if you don't have a disability? For starters, who else has Siri? Or Alexa, did you know Siri and Alexa were actually invented to help people with disabilities? And now they're in the mainstream world. So I'm gonna enlighten you a bit, a little, of how disability may impact on your life. And luckily, it's not a literal stairway to knowledge. This is actually a metaphysical one. The reason I'm down here is this stage has stairs. And we did try and get a ramp, and it's a bit dangerous. I really don't want anyone to get hurt trying to carry a 150 kilo wheelchair to get me on and off the stage. So in it's easy, this is an example of the environment is disabling somebody or an attitude. And disability is pretty prominent a billion people around the world. You might recognise some of them. Famous people. In Australia, one in five people have a disability. So that's something to think about. And the way we think about disability fits in two models. The medical one, where we try and fix the person because there's something wrong with me. So I spent a lot of my childhood in standing frames in hospitals. But I prefer the social model that says, if we have the right support and the right environment, I'm not disabled. Luckily, I was given the gift of disability as an early age when I had a childhood car accident, so I just learned to climb the, the ladder on the slippery dip with my arms, not my legs. And disability, it's not a new thing. It has been around for millennia. There is a picture of a Roman emperor on the screen right now. His name is Claudius. Now, he had physical and intellectual disabilities, and nobody believed in his ability, so much so that he was put so far down the line of succession that they didn't even bother to assassinate him. <laughs> he turned out to become the emperor and so, so good at it that somebody needed to assassinate him to take over the power. It's an example of underestimating someone's ability on a perceived disability. Tutankhamun is up here because I had the pleasure of visiting his tomb and I learned something interesting. They had a child born with spina bifida and way back then, they did not treat that child differently. They mummified the body in a beautiful little sarcophagus, just like anybody else would have been. The time I realized the connection between ancient disability and now is learning that the Paralympic Village is perfectly accessible to me. And it's the only time I notice I don't have a disability, even though I'm surrounded by the top athletes in the world who have disabilities, because it is accessible and inclusive. And that included the ancient monuments, the Parthenon, the Acropolis, and some of the greatest moments weren't winning medals. It was seeing an 80-year-old lady being able to go to the Summer Palace for the first time because there is finally a ramp and she is accepted. So we can't be what we can't see. If we don't see people with disabilities living normal lives, we don't realise disability is just a part of human diversity. It actually gives us much more interesting, dynamic discussions. So, what does that mean for all of you and what parting message? Look who is not there, who is not in the room, and what are you thinking or doing that is disabling you or someone else? And on that day, you have become a disability advocate. 
and I can go shopping and not be congratulated for being out of the house. I can be congratulated for who I am. You will see me and not my disability. Thank you.